theta, a sine of uh, alpha. So you see, I put the negative myself since I knew that the negative 2 Coulomb charge is going to be attracting the 2 Coulomb charge. So its Y component is going to be negative. The X component of both of them is, is positive. So that, that one adds up. OK, so then F1 is going to be what? K, Q1, Q2 over the distance squared, right? So K times the 4 times the 2 divided by their distance squared. So let's see here. What's their distance? The distance from here to here, that's 1, uh, one 0, right? So this distance is what? 4. What's this distance? 3. So what's this distance? Oh, that's good. It worked out to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the distance between them is 5. So their distance squared, 5 squared, times cosine of um, yeah, later. times cosine of theta. OK? So this theta is the same as this theta. The only reason I created an angle theta is so that I knew eventually I would have to take its cosine. So I really don't need the theta. I just need the cosine of the theta. So this theta is the same as this theta. And then the cosine of theta is 4 over 5. You see? Plus F2. That's going to be K times its charge 2 times its charge 2 divided by its distance squared. So this distance is uh, 3. That distance is 3, right? So that's good. It worked out to be a 45 angle. So this is a 3 radical 2, right? 3 radical 2. So their distance squared, that would be 3 radical 2 squared. 3 radical 2 squared times cosine of alpha, which is what? Cosine of alpha, well, that alpha is the same as this alpha, right? And then cosine of alpha is 3 over 3 rad 2, which is 1 over rad 2, because it's a 45 degree angle. So cosine of alpha is 1 over rad 2. So then uh, adding that, that's going to be what here? Uh, 16 times 232k divided by 125 plus, what's, what's that here? This is going to be 2, right? That's going to cancel with one of the 2s. So it's going to be 2k divided by 9 rad 2. All right? And now you can combine these and put it in your calculator and get a certain number from that. Is that right? Yes, no, I'd like to have some yeses before we go on. OK. And F total Y is going to be F1, which is the same thing. Times cosine. Uh, why did I write cos uh, cosine? That should be sine, right? Sine theta, right? Should be sine. So sine theta gives you 3 fifths minus k times 2 times 2 over uh, the distance squared 3 radical 2 
quantity squared times sine of alpha, which is going to be, again, 1 over rad 2. But except it's minus now because it's down, right? So now it's going to be, let's see here. This is going to be uh, 6 times 424k over 125 minus, that's going to be exactly the same, right, as this. It's, there's no difference. So 2k over 9 root 2. So let's do that one now. 24, it's not negative. So the force is, the, y, the positive y component still 1. It's much smaller than the x component. So the total force, the total total force, F total magnitude is going to be square root of F total x squared plus F total y squared. So square that, square that, combine them. 3.72 squared plus 0.31 squared. Enter. Well, this one is not going to change that much, that one mu a lot. So the total force comes out to be 3.73 times 10 to the ninth newtons. Right? So the total force is going to look like this. The x component is much larger than the y. That's what the f total looks like. The x component is 3.7. The y component is only 0.31. is one-tenth as much. But it's positive. So that means the, this guy is going to experience a force in that direction. Right? Now, is that less than the force experienced by it over here? What was the force of the two Coulomb charge when I put it at the origin? It should be less than that, I believe. Times 10 to the ninth? 10 to the tenth. So at the origin, it would have experienced the force 10 to the 10th, right? Over here, it would have experienced uh, even a greater force. Over here, in the medium. Over here, it should be less, and it is less, you see? 10 to the 3.73 times 10 to the 9th. And you want to find the direction of that, phi, 10 inverse of uh, 0.31 over 3.72. In other words, what is the direction of that force, this direction right here, phi? And it's going to be almost 0 degrees because the x component dominates the y component, right? So that's going to be very, very close to 0, 1, 2 degrees, 3 degrees, or whatever. So tell me what you get for that. And essentially what we've done is we've actually found, by doing that, we found the direction of the electrical force, the electrical field at that point. So it looks like this something, like this, the electrical field. Four point seventy six degrees. So almost zero, right, to the right. One of the trickiest things in this steps that I did is notice when I put the charges, I only put their absolute values. I didn't use the, the fact that they're negative. That comes in here. In other words, when I draw the picture, I determine which one is going to be negative, which one is going to be positive. Then when I put the forces, I just put the absolute values.